Fedrid Folly is the map right now. I don't know, all the casts, they're coming in on Fedrid Folly, so that's where we are. We've got Zero Cry going to be playing as the Inquisitor today, hunting down some heretics on behalf of the Ordo Hereticus. And who's going to be leading those heretics? It's Blood Rain under the moniker Kluve, playing as the Chaos Sorcerer. Hopefully, we see some good Chaos Sorcerer shenanigans here. I feel like it's been quite some time since I've seen a decent bit of Chaos Sorcerer play. It's just Val who seems to be playing CS, but you guys know Val. Sometimes he, he makes great plays, other times he's just um, interesting. Oh, he cancelled the CSM. He was building CSM, right? I'm not, like, tripping right now. I swear I just looked at Kluve and they were building CSM, and he cancelled it, and has gone for heretics. Okay, we're getting interesting shit. Honestly? Seriously? I don't mind mass heretics against the IG right now. CSM are weird, man. You end up with so little in terms of actual damage output and map control for the amount that you have to pay for them. It feels quite bad. Nice initial opening here from the Sorcerer, landing that Doom Belt's perfectly on the free. Model Garsman. Okay, this is weird. That's really annoying, the fact that he's having to... Okay, he just reinforces one of them. Lol. Not even fully reinforcing those Guardsmen. This is hilarious that he's going for the double Heretics and Cry is going for double Sentinel. You never see double Sentinel anymore, but ironically, it's amazing because Rain hasn't actually got any CSM. He's only got these light infantry melee squads that can't really do anything to Sentinels. Hilarious. You honestly, you never... I, I, when was the last time I cast a game with double Sentinels? It's got to have been a year. And he's going directly into Raptors. What is this game? This is bizarre. I would not be going melee heavy against an Inquisitor. That seems odd. Really, it seems quite silly. Let's be honest. All she has to do is pick up the Holy Brazier, get the Rosarius, and she's going to be practically immortal. Fortunate there, Proc in a special. It's doing a lot of damage to the Heretics. And the thing is, these fights with the Heretics are great because it's just feeding a lot of experience to the Inquisitor. Really, she should be focusing on the Heretics, not the Sorcerer. It's going to get her a good amount of XP. And when she levels up, she's getting more energy as well as all of her other passive stat buffs. So yeah, the Raptors come out, but... They can't really do too much against Sentinels. They're okay so long as the Stomp isn't available, but we do have a Stomp on this Sentinel. Not sure that Cry's paying much attention. Stops this one moving so the Raptors blob up, goes for the Stomp. But they jump. Okay, but now you turn around and you just back off this way and you should be in a good situation. Yeah, and the Raptors just have to retreat because they don't want to risk losing a model. And now it's back on to Gen Bashing Duty for the Sentinel. And he's gone for a heavy weapons team. I love how these guys just don't give a shit what the other's building. They just, they've got a build in mind that they want to mess around with, and they're just going for it. So the heavy weapons team... You wouldn't typically get that against a Chaos Sorcerer anyway, because of Sigil of the Rift or Vestments of the Warp that the Sorcerer can use. And this is an even worse situation for it, because you've got potential double grenade launcher heretics, and you've got Raptors, all of which are pretty damn good against a heavy weapons team. Now, as we can see right now, we don't actually have any grenade launchers. We've just got a Spine Champion Heretics. But I would have assumed that he would be going grenade launchers. That would be a more traditional choice against IG and the Double Sentinels. Melee is not going to be particularly good against the Double Sentinels. I'm shocked that we're not seeing the war gear upgrades on the Inquisitor with much priority, but actually a lot of damage coming in right now from the Bolt Pistol, if nothing else, of the Aspiring Champion Heretic, and trying to take out the Sentinel with the Doom Bolts. Man, that got close. Especially because these silly base turrets can actually hurt your own Sentinels as well when they stand in front of them. And if we look at the map right now, the map at control isn't actually that bad for Kluve, which is quite hilarious. He's going to actually kill the Inquisitor right now as well. Damn. Heavy Weapon Seam setting up nice and close there to that power node. Going to try and take that out. We see the Vestments of the Warp coming in. So trying to do a bit of a delay here with the Sorcerer. Not losing too much HP from the Sentinel whilst this upgrade is taking its time to purchase. Here it comes. I'm going to teleport atop that Heavy Weapon Seam and keep the pressure on. Raptors are on the Contested at the side. Going to be capping that up. And Cry is coming back out 
with his sentinels. There we go, we got one of the grenade launchers now on the field, the other one is not yet purchased. Oh, honestly, flame sword probably would be good right now, but Gluwolf needs to get some generators down. If we look over on the minimap over here, he doesn't have any generators yet. So that's problematic. We've got flamers on the guardsmen. This is a really, really unconventional game. Inquisit was repurchased going for the Holy, Holy Brazier, that's not too surprising. And GL's on the second heretic as well. Hmm. You see the damage from the GL's on the Sentinel, in spite of it being a single entity, is actually pretty good. GL's do actually do bonus damage against heavy infantry, so yeah, honestly, they're not that bad. And on this map, firing over the ledges like this, it's pretty strong. A reasonable amount of auto guns here to focus down the Inquisitor. Uh, none on this squad, that's problematic. Hammer of the Witches is going to shut up the Sorcerer there, We're only able to get two out of the six Doom Bolts out. Just be careful with this Sorcerer, taking a lot of damage there from the Scent. But yeah, wow, Geo Ticks are going to deny these Sentinels quite well. But nothing's over here on the far side. Uh, this Heavy Weapons team isn't doing anything. you would have been better off just getting a, a default Guardsman squad. Very odd to purchase that Heavy Weapons team. given he's against the sorcerer and he's seen raptors. Very weird. But he is going to force off Blood Rain's forces here. I don't think the Brazy is that good. There has been a lot of talk about the power of the Brazier for 20 power as opposed to 25. It's a bit weird actually. Everything was 20 power. All the tier 1 war gear upgrades used to be 20 power, but slowly, one by one, they've been getting nerfed. Think the Power Sword and the Lord Commissar, and don't get me wrong, there's no way the Power Sword and the Lord Commissar should be 20 power. It's insane what it gives you for, for 20 power. But that was 20 power. Um, Sanguine Chainsword, Power Sword and the Force Commander, 20 power. The Rending Talons and the Hive Tyrant used to be 20 power, they're now 25. Um, I think the Bang Bang Hammer on the War Boss was always more than 20 power, which is a bit questionable when you compare it to some of the other ones. It does way higher DPH, but it's only normal melee. Heavy Weapons Team in a Repair Bunker against Grenade Launcher Heretics. This is, this is a wild game. Cry is is flexing on my man, but Kluv is playing a very strange build. <laughs> you don't see this. The other problem with the Inquisitor, with going Raptors against the Inquisitor, is you've got a sail as an option in tier 2, relatively cheap, and you can't even jump out of his sail, so it's just like, bang, I'm going to negate your Raptors. I'm just going to click them and you can't use them. For such an expensive squad like the Raptors, your opponent having that tool is very, very powerful. But yeah, let me, let me know what you think in the comments down below, guys. Do you think the Holy Brazier should be 20 power, or do you think it should be 25? A little bit of background, basically the way that it works now with the logic is, if the ability that comes with a 50 DPS power melee weapon is not very good, whether it's a passive or an active ability, then it's only 20 power. But if the ability is really strong that you get with your tier 1 melee upgrade, then it becomes 25 power. So for example, the Demon Hunter, he gets a 50 DPS Force Sword as an upgrade in Tier 1. But the ability that you get with that is only passive energy draining from your opponent. I don't think it saps, I think it just drains their energy. So that's a pretty weak passive ability, so it is only 20 power. I don't really think the Holy Pyre ability on a hero as energy intensive as the Inquisitor is a good enough ability to warrant this being 25 power. And she isn't particularly durable either, so I find it quite odd. We've got a bit of memory going on right now. We've got the Warp Global being used by the Sorcerer there to teleport in some Plague Marines who I think were meant to be shooting down the Imperial Guard bunker. But, um... I don't know. I don't know about this player. We've already got the Assail. We've got Curse of Zinch on Guardsmen. 
yet to see any upgrades on the actual raptors. I feel like if the heretics were here, they'd be able to shoot down onto the bunker. I'm not sure how I feel about the Plague Marine purchase. Now, obviously, this is hard AV in the form of a snaring missile launcher, and that will be quite useful against the Sentinels, even though they're not vehicle armor. It will snare them, and then you can kill them easier. Uh, and also, it, of course, deters any Chimera play, but of course, that just means that Cry now will not go for a Chimera. Isn't it amazing how the Sentinel can just four-shot a generator? Is that... Does that require level 2, or can they do that at level 1 with a missile launcher? Because that is pretty insane. That is very, very annoying to deal with. But yeah, Christ sees the Plague Greens now, so he's not going to go for a Chimera. He's going to go for a lot of long-range piercing DPS, so he grabs some Stormtroopers and hands them an Assault Kit. Increasing the range and reducing the cooldown on their Hotshot last guns. that's going to be a pretty good tool to kill everything except the Heavy Infantry Raptors. So that's going to be their job to leap atop the Stormtroopers. I have to admit, I'm a little bit confused right now why Gloove is putting all the pressure onto this bunker in the middle. He's kind of walking into the trap of Cry. This is obviously a solid defensive position and landing a beautiful frag grenade there right on the feet of the Raptors. Raptors very lucky to get out with full HP. And all of the forces of Gloove are suppressed and vulnerable to stomps. But no stomp on this Sentinel, it would appear. And that bunker is very low. It's something on free HP, but he's going to stay in now because he's actually got the Plague Marines tied up in melee. Can they stop and shoot? They missed! They shot at the Stormtrooper, not at the bunker. And now they're going to get wiped. Oh, no, they're not. I was going to say Hammer of the Witches would definitely wipe them on retreat, even if he couldn't get the melee proc, but saved by the warp global there of the Chaos Sorcerer. Sentinels, though, back to their wonderful duties here, destroying the generator. I don't know why he didn't use Dark Flames there. Maybe he didn't have the red. You guys will be able to go back and see. I know he must have had the red. We've got a little bit there from losing the gen. Maybe he didn't. I'm not certain. But pop Dark Flames on it. That would definitely have force the heavy weapons team out of the bunker probably should take the heavy weapons team out of the bunker right now you can actually repair with the heavy weapons team so he could fix the the bunker with the heavy weapons team and he needs to heal them back at base as well but the raptors have had enough of that nonsense they're going to go down to the right and try and take these vps they need to be very careful from the dps here of the stormtroopers initial barrages from the sentinel are not going to do a whole lot there because they were in crack missiles now they're in frag and that will cause a lot of problems for these heretics. Check it out. Oh my god, look at that. If they all landed flush, that basically would kill them all. There was a Hell Fury strike down here. And it looks like Raptors did get into melee. Killed three out of five of those Stormtroopers. But now they need to jump out. Commissar purchased on the Guardsman. I don't know why this bug occurs. There's no Sarge right now. But they get 10 models. Very weird. It's not easily repeatable. It should only be 9 models. Because you have 6 by default, plus 1 the, with the actual leader. And then plus 2 when you get the Commissar or the Sarge. That's why there's normally 9 models of a Sarge. So I'm not sure... I'm not sure what's going on there with that bug. It's very weird. Anyhow, Cry has managed to just take to tier 3 off of all this. I mean, he's got very good AV just with these two. And of course, he can don a last cannon on his heavy weapons team if he needs to. He probably is going to lose the bunker now, though, because he's not going to be able to counter the Dreadnought. He's got the wrong missiles loaded in right now. Presumably, he's going to be swapping to crack. But this is a lot of pressure. Constructing another bunker there to block the Plague Marine from being able to shoot at the Sentinel. Then cancels it, but he, the longer you have it constructing, you have to pay a percentage of the cost. So if it builds 90% and then you cancel it, you only get 10% of the cost back. Question now then, I suppose, is what is the play in tier 3? You know what would actually be really good right now for Cry? Bulgrins. Bulgrins would be awesome. They'd be able to tie this thing up in melee and kick its ass. They take basically no damage from the range attacks. 
buff due to the passive damage resistance that they have and also being super heavy infantry. There's nothing good to actually shoot them down. And nothing good to beat them in melee either. Raptors would have no chance. If you don't do power melee. Check out the damage of a sail. Into a health fury. Yikes. Yikes. Curse of Zinch is so lackluster. I wouldn't I wouldn't waste my resources on that. Unless you're having lots of big melee brawls, which clearly they're not. I feel like the Rod of Warpfire would have made a lot more sense. It actually increases your melee DPS significantly. And Yeah, that's gonna be the end of the dread. Okay. Pressure there from the CS trying to take out the stormtroopers. What's this? Our oh, demonic summoning. All right, but cry. I mean, I don't know what to say, guys. This was a bit of a flex from Cry, I suppose, because this game <laughs> looks like it's quite over in favor of Cry right now. This is not looking good. Only f less than 30 VPs for Mr. Kruf. There's no way he could win this. Look at the resources on Cry. I mean, he, he's going to be able to get a friggin' super unit. Why is my mouse not letting me single click? What the hell? I don't know why he constantly attacked with his full army right down the center here onto the bunker. That was so silly. But I do commend his, his double heretic into Raptor opening. I wouldn't have gone the Raptors. I, I do think not going CSM is perfectly viable against IG at the moment. I really do. It does leave you a little bit vulnerable to the Kadashans, but honestly, by the time that you actually get grenade launchers and the AC on your ticks, they counter Kadashans just as good as CSM, if not better. Because Kadashans are vulnerable to the AOE, the GLs. But getting Raptors against an Inquisitor seems ridiculous, and I don't think that's due to the Inquisitor doing having a 20. What the hell is that sound effect? I don't think that's due to the Holy Brazy giving 20 power. I just don't think the Raptors are very good against these melee heroes. And, and again, I feel like it's quite lucky that Kluv, um faced a heavy weapons team in tier 1 rather than Kaddish and Devils. That would have made the Raptors even worse. So yeah, the whole thing, it doesn't really make any sense to me. But we got the Inquisitorial Mandate now. A little bit of invulnerability there for the Ink. And she's gonna use that to... Decap the VP. Another Chaos Dreadnought. There's no way he could do anything here, surely. Like, even if he killed the Sentinels and wiped the Heavy Weapons team, it wouldn't matter. You just go for the Kasakin and a fucking Bane Blade. How is he ever going to beat this? Look at his resources. There's no chance. No chance. Uh, the VPs. There, it is a zero cap right now. Don't tell me he makes a comeback. That's absurd. He's forcing melee right now, but he's is he going to wipe the heavy weapons team? Okay, wipes the heavy weapons team. A direct missile hit onto the sorcerer by a sentinel. Hello? Okay. Kirst Dreadnought should be able to take out this sentinel. Yep. Plague Marine's going to go in. Uh-huh. Needs to stay in melee. Oh, dear. It's gonna kill the dread. Yikes. And the sorcerer is gonna kill the guardsman and gets a sink kill on the commissar. Absolutely brilliant. Cry has just got stormtroopers now. <laughs> but he can easily get the Kasakin out. Uh, but Kluv actually kept his raptors alive and they're chilling down here. Definitely need to go back to the base and heal. I'm not sure how or why the Inquisitor died in that fight. Chaos 
Well, Cry definitely does not need any power, that's for sure. He gets the cap. Kluv gets the cap. It is a 2-0 to zero cap. Get out of here. How's he going to deal with Kasakin? I mean, he has Raptors and he has a teleporting CS, so he can put a bit of pressure onto these elite Imperial Guard ranged troops. I don't know why he didn't go back to, to the base, though, to heal these Raptors. I found that rather odd. Oh, a little bit premature of his jump there. He's not going to suppress the Kasakin. They are outputting a lot of DPS. Oh, beautiful fucking nade spike as well from the AKST. Man, I hate these grenades. And then the Kasakin going into melee. Dude, it vexes me. It vexes me how much melee damage these guys do. <laughs> Why are they running into melee with Chaos Raptors? It doesn't make any sense. And they get wiped and retreat. No. Oh, man. There was opportunities there. Why did he not send the Raptors back to base to heal? I know he's only 7 VPs, but come on, you know you wipe most of his things. I mean, we're seeing plays now. The Chaos, Another Chaos Dreadnought. Another one comes out of the base and he uses the warp global there from the Chaos Sorcerer to teleport into the retreat path of the Inquisitor and kills the Inquisitor. There is nothing right now on the field that can deal with the Chaos Dreadnought on their own. Now, the Cajun Kaskins can swap between their weapon kits. They're going to be picking up a couple of Melter Guns. He uses the Global there from the Inquisitor to infil call in some more infiltrated Stormtroopers, and they too are going to be picking up some Melter Guns. But the thing is, you can go into melee here with one of them, with your Plague Marines, and then the Chaos Dreadnought can go into melee with the other one. But the Plague Marines, for some reason, are chasing the Stormtroopers, I guess because he doesn't have any more units, so the Stormtroopers will get on the VP, but the result of that is now that you're just going to be able to kill the Chaos Dreadnought. These Melter Guns aren't even shooting. Uh, this guy here and this guy here, they're not shooting. Oh well. Oh well. Sorcerer's back, but no weapon upgrade on the Sorcerer. He actually gets the kill with the Curses each. Holy shit. And another Nade Spike. God, I love it. Can't wait for Nade Spikes to be neutered with a minimum range. That's going to be a godsend. Is that a squad of melee heretics? What on earth is this game? What is this game? What? Inquisitor repurchased. He likes that combo, doesn't he? A sail into the Hell Fury. The VPs are bleeding down for Cry. Two to zero cap for him. Sending some Kasakin back out, I assume. To aid this Inquisitor. Geotic's gonna guard the contested. And another dreadnought. Where is the Sword of Flame and why why was it not already here? Man. It's a teleport out there with the sorcerer getting very low on HP. Plague Marines just can't kill anything. What a lucky special there. Ooh, and he tries to get a few more models with the Doom Bolts there, but it's not gonna work. Mmm, I I think there should be enough time for the Kasakin to run over and get onto the natural VP. Maybe not with the heretics moving in here. Oh, when you kill the Plague Marines, it's going to knock them off the point? No, it didn't. They still caught the point. That's disappointing. It's going for Ogrins now. No energy for a frag grenade. Maybe. It's the level 3. Wow. Demonic summoning. I guess they have to go onto the Inquisitor, but the Inquisitor's got the mandate to go invulnerable for a decap. But the VPs are still ticking down. Got construction work next door. Brilliant. He can't do it, can he? He's actually gonna lose. Cry, what the fuck? Cry's lost. You only have 7 VPs. Well, actually, you'd have less if you've got a 50% faster capping unit like the Kasakin with a sergeant, but oh my god, what the hell did we just witness? 
I mean, I feel like the, the drilling and banging is, is appropriate right now because this was a cacophony of decisions. Oh well, there you go. That's all I've got. <laughs> I don't really know what else to say. I'm sure that must have been enjoyable. I was wanting something interesting from the Chaos Sorcerer. Well, I was wanting something good. I don't think this was it. This was like a Val game. This was very interesting. There were certainly good plays made, but this was not conventional Sorcerer play. And I feel like it... If people see this, they're just going to be like, mm, Yeah, Sorcerer's not for me. I'll play Chaos Lord, thanks. Ah, well. We will keep on waiting for the Sorcerer games that make people think otherwise. It's going to be all for you, boy Torpid. This time, I am signing out.